Hi there, welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie. I'm Julie the Paper Pixie, and this is episode 240. As you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from. And if you're catching the replay, put hashtag replay in the comments so I can say hey, hey to you after the live stream. Welcome everybody. Hi, Ange and Peggy, Kathy. Hi, Mickey, Carrie. Oh, Carrie, I hope you feel better. I'm glad to be a welcome distraction for you. Hi, Sue. Hi, Deanna. Julaine, Sandy, Paula, Mickey. Hi, Debbie. Welcome. I saw all of your comments. Product shares are starting to arrive. It's always so fun to hear what your favorites are. And I'm pretty darn impressed with the post office this go round. They were arriving lickety split. We took them to the post office on Monday, filled up what my entire trunk with packages. We had about 250 packages we dropped off. I was sending out a bunch of things and um, but things are arriving very quickly, which is wonderful. So I'm excited about that. Um, tonight, we are going to be doing products from the he, uh, He's the Man. I keep wanting to say He's all that. <laughs> but the He's the Man product suite, or yes, product suite. I have got a shadow box for a gift card tonight and a really fun masculine card. It's a birthday card, but you can easily turn it into a Father's Day card with the products in the suite. Super versatile suite and fantastic for masculine projects. I know that those are difficult for many of us, but it's always fun to try to come up with some inspiration for you. So that's what we're doing tonight. Let me go ahead and have my husband, Brian, say hello to you. He is watching for your questions and comments. We are gonna do Q&A at the end of the live stream. So if you do have a question that comes up, just put Q colon before your question and then we will queue those together at the end of the live stream and go through those questions, Q&A, rapid fire, I should say, just so that we don't interrupt the projects tonight. Let's see what else do I have for you. If you don't already have a demonstrator or if you haven't shopped with me in a while and you'd like a copy, complimentary copies of the current catalogs, you can put in a request at thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail. And if you shop with me, you can earn Pixie perks. So, um, Orders of $25 or more earn Pixie Perk stars. Each order increment, each single order increment of $25 earns a Pixie Perk star. You do need to use the host code on orders under $150 to get those Pixie Perk stars. If you earn 10 stars, you earn one reward, which you can redeem for a free stamp set up to $27 in value. Or you can save your rewards and you can redeem two rewards for a stamp and die bundle valued up to $54. So it's a great way to earn free stuff for your loyalty. And if you want the easiest way to shop with the host code, the paperpixie.com slash shop will auto magically add the current host code to your order. If your order is 150 or more, make sure to take that host code off. So you earn stamp and rewards and you will also earn pixie perks on those as well. All right, I've got show and tell from the kids. Let me give you a quick sneak peek of what we're making tonight. This is a shadow box holding a gift card. And then we've got this card. I love this. I love putting together kind of a collage of elements. And again, the suite of products. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. All right, so let's start with Lily. Let me move Nolan's off to the side. Lily's my third grader. She loves to draw, and one of her favorite YouTubers is Draw So Cute. I think her name is Wenny, W-E-N-N-Y. But uh, she, I think this was at some point this week, both the kids came down with a stomach virus. Nolan on Thursday, Lily in the wee hours of Sunday morning. So far, Brian and I have remained unscathed. So um, I think she drew this on one of her sick days. She was home from school Monday. Nolan was home from school Friday. But I was laughing at this little word bubble. Know what's on the me, me in you <laughs> menu. Sweet wishes. Saturday strawberry. Let's see. I'm not going to make a cheese joke. They're too cheesy. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Oh, so that's so much fun. She, um, as you can tell, has a really good time drawing. And I love those draw so cute eyes that they draw. And Nolan, during his sick time, was binge watching Minecraft videos. And so this is his version of, I think this is a Minecraft scene. He was explaining to us that these two people are mining for whatever this special stone is here on the side. What did he say that you could do with it? 
It has gold. You can turn into gold armor. But yeah, he had fun explaining that to us. But he's got a cute little treasure chest here. She's holding some TNT. I think you can see that. So he's Lego obsessed, but it's always fun to see what he comes up with. All right, why don't we jump into tonight's projects? I think what we're going to start with, <laughs> let's do the shadow box first. How's that? Got to get my measurements here. I was good and remembered to write those measurements down this week. Let me show you the product suite really quickly. I'm going to grab my catalog as well. So the He's the Man product suite is on pages 78 and 79 of the annual catalog. I do get mine spiral bound. I know you guys are always wondering. Um, I should say I spiral bind it. I spiral bind it myself because <laughs> um, I'm a office, what is it, an office gadget nerd. I love stuff like that. But the, here's the He's the Man suite. It's $68 to get the suite collection, which comes with the He's All That bundle, stamp set and dies, which I'll show you these. I couldn't find my swatch book for the, um, I just got Brian's swatch books, but that's, this is the He's All That stamp set. Really great stamp set for all the men in your life. You've got birthday, you've got um, this is like an anniversary one together for the long haul. Every day with you is another adventure. Holy smokes, you're amazing. Wishing you a happy Father's Day. I love this little Hello Handsome with the mustache. To the man who does everything. And I actually read that to see. I thought it said to the man who has everything, which is what I use tonight for a gift card. Because that's what you get people who have everything is a gift card. And then here are the dies. I haven't labeled these yet, but they are fantastic. Because not only do they cut... They also emboss. So this is one die, cuts out two banners. We're gonna have some fun with the dies tonight. But the um, circle, the oval, this shape, and this shape all have an extra sort of ridge there that gives it a really nice finish. So we'll have fun with those tonight. I'm gonna be breaking out the magnetic cutting plate, which I'm obsessed with. Brian's used it way more than me, but it works like a charm. So. All right, so that is He's the Man, again, 78 to 79. In the description of this video, if you want to shop the products that I'm using tonight, there's an easy link in the description, whether you're watching on YouTube or Facebook. So go ahead and check that out. You can choose what you want to add to your cart, but that's an easy way to do it. Now, that will not add the host code. You'll want to make sure if your order is under 150 so you can get your Pixie perks to grab the host code from my website, thepaperpixie.com. You can find it at the top of any page and make sure that gets added to your order. organized here and then just going to bring out my tray of stuff so I can grab paper for this project. I do have some templates for you as well. If you have any questions, again, just put a Q colon in front of your question. We'll get to those when we do Q&A at the end. So we're going to start with a piece of Sahara sand and I just covered up my measurements. Good, Julie. Good, good. Okay. Seven and a half by eight and three quarters. Now we're gonna have some fun with score lines here. You know me, and I love my shadow boxes. Um, so we're gonna, there is always a method to my madness here. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and score four, the, four, the same four measurements on all four sides. So we're gonna do three eighths of an inch, one and one eighth, one and a half, and two and a quarter. Then I'm just gonna keep rotating a quarter of a turn and repeating those. Three eighths, one and one eighth, one and a half, two and a quarter, three eighths, one and one eighth, one and a half, two and a quarter, and finally, the same measurements, three eighths, one and one eighth. You'd think I'd have them memorized after saying them so many times. One and a half, two and a quarter. Now we're on the long side. We're gonna make two score lines that are short at two and five eighths and six and one eighth. So two and five eighths, I'm gonna come down to the second horizontal score line. Just go slowly um, and then six and one eighth 
down to the second horizontal score line. Let me hold that up to the light so you can see that. Short score lines there. I'm gonna turn it 180 and repeat the same one. So two and five eighths, stop at the second score line. Six and one eighth, stop at the second score line. Now we are gonna do the tabs on this box. The tabs are totally optional, but I find that it's easier to put the shadow box together as well as sturdier. So now we're gonna come on the short sides and do one and seven eighths down to the fourth score line and five and five eighths. Now, this project is gonna post to my blog next Tuesday. I've got <clears throat> some catch up to do. I've got a card and a box for tomorrow and Friday. And then the card, this card will post Monday and the shadow box will post Tuesday. So hang tight for that. You can always watch the replay if you can't wait until then. So one and seven eighths down to the fourth score line and five and five eighths. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're basically just completely dividing that right down the center there. Lots of crazy score lines I know, but that's what makes these shadow boxes so magic. I'm gonna bring in the template here. This is what it's gonna look like when we're done. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and, ooh, I got a frog in my throat today. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm gonna grab my bone folder. We're gonna fold and burnish on all the score lines that go all the way across the paper. So don't worry about those short score lines. I mentioned on my blog, it's been kind of a whirlwind 10 days. Started with the Girl Scout camping trip, which I told you a little bit about last week, and then um, lots of product shares work. I have to give a shout out to my husband, Brian, because he did all of the ribbon soup to nuts, believe it or not. He unwound it, cut it all, rewound it, labeled it, packaged it. So yeah, he was. it was a labor of love for sure, but he did all of it, so... Very impressed. He's hired. <laughs> I did all the paper, and then um, then the kids came down with the stomach virus. So <laughs> it was just one of those. Yeah, can't get to the blog right now, but um, I was definitely creating in between. So, all right. So we've done all of that. We've folded and burnished on all the score lines, and we're doing this in a landscape orientation. So I usually kind of pick and choose where I'm going to do the little diagonal pieces. That's why I gave you the measurements the way that they are. We're gonna start to focus on the tabs first, okay? So, I'm gonna flip it to the back. You know me, for some reason, it's just easier for my brain to see the score lines from the back. I'm gonna come in one, two, three score lines and cut up, and four score lines and cut up. I like to cut up each side of the tab here. Now, when I was creating this project earlier today, I cut the tab off by accident. So one of them on my sample, um, there's no tab on one of the corners, but I like to cut up, e so you can come in four and come in three, and then we're gonna cut up four on both of them. So basically cutting on either side of that tab that we wanna leave behind. Again, the tabs are optional. It depends on, um, you know, I get feedback both ways. I personally like the way that it holds up together. It's not as messy to glue together if you leave a tab, okay? So I've got kind of isolated that strip. I'm gonna turn it a quarter of a turn and coming in all the way till just before this big section, we're gonna remove this whole corner. Okay, so we've got all of those little sections are removed. Then I'm gonna come in and just leave behind the tab. So I'm cutting on that second to last score line there to leave this little tab behind, okay? Then we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side here, cut up either side of that tab. And if it's easier for you, another thing that you can do, nobody's gonna see this, but if you wanna make sure that you know where the tabs are, you can kinda of come in and mark those and nobody's gonna see them. Just so you, set, you remind yourself, don't cut those little rectangles. <laughs> Leave them behind, so. Um, I've made so many shadow boxes, I can look at this and picture the tabs, but um, if you've not tried one before, sometimes that little tick mark will help you. So removing that corner again and then leaving this little tab behind. These are fun to make and it's a special, I, um, one of my team members, Linda, shout out to Linda, asked if I had done one for a, a gift card. I'm like, you know what, I haven't yet. So 
Challenge accepted. Now on the opposite side, we're gonna do the same thing. Now if your OCD is bothering you because I didn't put a star on this one, <laughs> it was bothering me. I put a star on only three of them. All right, so you can do pencil too, but nobody's gonna see those tabs. Again, cutting up on either side of that tab, coming up four score lines. Quarter of a turn, remove all this mess here. And then just leave the tab behind. Or in other words, cut away everything but the tab. Then we got one more tab here. This would be a great project to put like a Lowe's or Home Depot card in. I don't know, what would you like to get a gift card for? Harbor Freight? <laughs> um, Lowe's, Home Depot, I'm trying to think what else. And then leave the tab behind. Amazon's always a good winner too. You can always find something at Amazon. All right, so now we've got these other short score lines where we only came down two. Now, because I scored on the other side, it's easier for me to see it on this side. We're just gonna cut right up those short score lines and I'm cutting right down the middle of the score line. No need to mess with cutting to the right or left of it, just right down the middle. And then what we're gonna do is create these little diagonal cuts. You can just do that with your scissors. So because I'm right-handed, I like to cut sort of from right to left. I'm gonna fold this section out of the way and I'm coming down one score line from the bottom of the cut and I'm gonna cut from that score line on the angle up to that cut. So let me show you what that looks like again. That's the way that we cut right there. Okay, now I like to flip my cardstock so that it's always on the right for me. And then same thing, come down a score line, and cut up to the bottom of that cut mark, like that. And that's what's gonna give you that sort of shadow box frame miter cut there. We're gonna do the same thing to the opposite side, cutting up those short score lines. And then just working our way around cutting those angle cuts. And if you do it in one cut with your paper snips, then you're gonna get a straight line. Let the scissors do the straight line for you. There we go, okay. Now the last thing we need to do is just come in and miter cut on these tabs a little bit. We don't have any edges in the way. These tabs are kind of tiny, but we're gonna use our tear and tape to put this all together, which I find is easier and less messy than liquid glue for this project. You know I love my liquid glue, but with shadow boxes, tear and tape is my preferred, preferred adhesive of choice. One last miter cut. All right, so now this should look like, get my mess cleaned up here. <clears throat> Now looks like the template, okay? So there's that. This will be on the blog post on Tuesday, so mark your calendars for that. And always come back to watch the replay. Thank you. And tear and tape. I'm gonna go ahead and run tear and tape along all of the outside edges. Now, tear and tape is just a little bit narrower than 3 eighths of an inch. I think this is still the old version of tear and tape. We've got it, we have, an updated version that's just slightly thinner. I still have quite a bit of stash. I'm going around to each of these and I'm putting my tear and tape just right up to the score line as opposed to the edge. There's not a lot of extra space there anyway, so it really doesn't matter. But we're gonna put tear and tape in 12 different spots, believe it or not. So all along those outside edges, then along these short tabs, and if you want, you can use a metal ruler to tear your tape. I love doing that sometimes as well. Got that on my favorites page, this guy I love. He comes paired with the 12 inch ruler together. And on my favorites page, if you wanna check that out, thepaperpixie.com slash favorites. Those are some of my favorite, both Stampin' Up! and non-Stampin' Up! things that I love to use. All right, so that's eight pieces of tear and tape. 
So we've got that four outside edges, the four tabs, and I'm gonna flip this over and we're just gonna put a tiny little piece right along those little angled sections. And it's okay if you've got tear and tape going over score lines, that's gonna help this little miter cut stick down on our shadow box frame. I love reading that PJ, what a special gift. All right, now I like to be risky and pull all of the tear and tape off. So I'm gonna grab my take your pick tool, the pointy end. I'm gonna show you a trick with the magnetic cutting plate um, with the spatula end, but I'm just gonna come in and pull off all of the backing. We're gonna do it all at once. If you want to, you can use the silicone craft mat if you're worried about your stuff sticking to your project or to your workspace. I'm actually gonna do that because I should have done those last. All right, so just that way that won't stick, hopefully. And then we'll just keep taking off all the backing. It's fun to make a mess. Did you really craft if you didn't make a mess, right? I'm being all haphazard about how I'm doing this. <laughs> all right, now the fun part. I think I got it all, right? All right, so we are gonna start by doing the flat edges first. So the edges that have the tabs attached to them. Now, I'm looking at this, if I have any tear and tape hanging over the edges, I just kind of fold it back on itself. One of my favorite things about tear and tape, super forgiving. So the short edge we're doing on this project, I'm gonna fold on the first and the third score line. So let me just show you first and third and then I can just press that flat. Using our score lines, that is going exactly where we need that shadow box side to go. So again, you wanna do the ones with the tabs first, first and third score line, press it down flat, okay? Next, what we're gonna do is line up the tab, so that uh, scored line with that cut edge to form our box corners now. See, those stars are gonna be completely hidden. Nobody's gonna even know we did that to let us know where we were supposed to, what we were supposed to leave behind. So I'm just squaring up those corners, working my way around. Now again, the tabs are not necessary, but I love the way that it gives this box much more structure. And then the last one like so. So all we have left to do are the long sides now. And essentially what we're gonna do now, you can see we still have that tear and tape that's sitting under there. We're gonna use that in just a moment when we push this down. I like to curve this edge and this cut edge, I kind of butt up against the back wall as I kind of curl it under and then roll it down. So if you can't push it back any more that edge, then it's right in the right spot. And as I roll that down, just kind of pinching down on those corners and having that tear and tape catch. So we've got one side that's done, super sturdy, really sharp corners there. Same thing, kind of curling this under. I want this cut edge to hit the back wall and then I'm gonna roll it down. And then go ahead and just roll it and kind of Tighten up those corners as you press it down in place. And then we've got that shadow box, no gaps on the sides, and it's gonna fit a gift box for you, or a gift box, a gift card. Just grabbing a random gift card from my drawer here. A restaurant gift card, so that's gonna fit right inside. It's got a little bit of wiggle room. I didn't want it to be too tight. Okay, so that'll fit in there and this is three quarters of an inch deep, so you could throw in some chocolate, some Hershey nuggets. Um, I don't know, you guys can probably think of some cute things. Maybe a cute little granola bar or a couple Snickers, little mini candy bars or something in there. So that's the base of it in Sahara sand. To make the lid, we're gonna do a real easy lid. This is from the He's the Man designer series paper, and I love this pattern with the pigs and the cows and the 
fire spatulas, spoon forks and knives, barbecue sauce, super cute. So this piece measures four and five sixteenths, which is one sixteenth more than four and a quarter by five and nine sixteenths, which is one sixteenth more than five and a half. So that extra sixteenth allows this lid to fit over the shadow box. So um, it's a really important piece. If you do the four and a quarter by five and a half, you're not gonna be able to get the lid on. And if you go too far, where you go to four and three eighths by five and five eighths, the lid's gonna be too loose. So that sixteenth of an inch is key. And I'm just gonna go ahead, this is the easy part. I always like to cut, um, cut the paper to the difficult measurements, those 16th of an inch increments, but then the scoring is much easier. So we're just gonna score at 5 eighths of an inch on all four sides, okay? So super easy, five eighths on all four sides. Go ahead and fold and burnish on all the score lines. I love the back pattern of this paper too. Kind of a fun surprise when the recipient lifts the lid. And then a real simple template here. We're just with it landscape. I'm just gonna cut up each of the vertical score lines stopping at that first horizontal score line. And then folding this out of the way, we're just gonna go ahead and do miter cuts on those tabs. And then turn it 180 and do the same thing. Cut up each of the vertical score lines. And miter cut the tabs. And I'm creating quite the crafter math of pieces and parts of paper around here. All right. So there we go, that looks like the template. And then we're just gonna take liquid glue. Hopefully this is a decent bottle. I used up a lot of glue this weekend. And of course it's starting to spill out. Let's do. So I don't know if you guys have noticed that, but sometimes when you get to the end of a bottle or it's been a while, um, some of my glue has a mind of its own and just starts squirting out. So we're not going to make a mess like that on tonight's live stream. So liquid glue on the tab, we're going to line up that score line with that cut edge. You can use tear and tape for this as well, but I do like the flexibility of the lid to make sure we get that corner all lined up. A little bit heavy handed on the glue there. Again, just making sure you're lining up that cut edge with the score line will give you a really nice corner. Let's see, that's one more to go. Oh, you guys are so sweet. Thank you. I love me some boxes, don't I? All right, so quick and simple lid. You could do a double reinforced edge if you wanted to. I did want to conserve paper so you can get um, four lids out of one sheet of 12 by 12. And this paper is not directional, so it doesn't really matter which way you put it on, but then that'll just nicely fit over the box. And there's a little bit of an edge there where the recipient can lift the lid off. Love that. All right, and then the ribbon is a combo pack, and I'm trying to remember which suite it's in. It's in the one with the bear, the woods one. Hold on. But it's got that coordinating Sahara sand, so let me flip to that just to show you where it is in the catalog. Happy Forest Friends, page 46. It is the Old Olive and Sahara Sand Twill Ribbon Combo Pack. So you get five yards of each, but I love working with the twill ribbon. So we're just gonna tie a bow around this, uh, not a bow, a knot. So I'm gonna show you how I do my square knots. Again, I love tying off the spool. So a spool on the right, flip it over to the left. I'm actually gonna shorten this a bit because I am doing just a knot here. 
So I do my little plus sign here and reverse tweezers are nowhere in sight, but I don't need them because I can actually use my finger here to hold the knot. I bring the top down. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and then the bottom tail, I go over the top and then pull it through. Let me do this, explain this again. So I did my plus sign, okay? I bring the top down. This is a little bit different than I do bows. This one I go over, that one I just pulled down the top and then pull it through. But here's the trick to get your square knot. So I'm switching fingers here, holding the thing. I'm gonna pull my tail here, but only a little bit, and I'm gonna hold it in place on the right as I pull the left. And you'll start to see that knot is pulling over the top. It's because you want that to kind of scoop over the top. Let me show you that before I pull it a little bit tighter, but see how nice that looks? And then you can start to pull on the right just a little bit until you get this where you want it. Then you've got that nice square knot with a nice sort of ribbon wrapped over the edge. And I've been on a little bit of a kick with some ribbons um, to cut the ends straight. It's kind of a cool look especially for a masculine project, as opposed to doing an angled cut. I thought that was pretty cute. Okay, so we've got that here. Let's do a little bit of stamping and then die cutting and I can show you the amazing magnetic cutting platform. I do have that linked in the products list that I've got linked in the description of this video because if you don't already have it, you're gonna want it. Now, quick caveat with the magnetic cutting plate, the instructions that are coming with the ones that are shipping now incorrectly show to use plate number two. You don't need plate number two at all. So I'll show you what we're gonna do. I was using, all right, Sahara Sand. We're, I'm gonna stamp first in early espresso and the sentiment to the man who does everything. That would be my husband. You do do everything. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, my uh, early espresso is pretty juicy. Stamp that first. But it's so cute, it's got little tools, and I love the way that looks, rustic looking. All right, and then I'm gonna bring in the stamp and cut and emboss machine. And here's what you need with the, I wish I could um, show you how heavy this is. Heavy is a good thing. We're gonna do cutting plate one. Then this number five, which is the magnetic cutting plate, and see how well loved ours is already. It probably weighs two or three pounds, maybe. Anyways, it's fantastic. It's full metal on the back, got the magnet in the middle, and then your self-healing mat on the top. And it really is self-healing. We Brian cut all of these ones a while ago, and they all started to look a little bit nicer after a while. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then I'm gonna take my piece here. I might as well do these pieces at the same time. I do wanna show you really quickly. I'm gonna line this up first and then show you something. If I can demonstrate it on camera. Just wanna show you, I'm shaking this right now. <laughs> it's not moving or going out of the way, which I love. Yeah, because before you would put it on there. Yeah, before the, mag shift. Yeah, the magnets would shift, that's right. <laughs> Brian's done a lot of die cutting in his day, so yeah, with the old magnetic, not the one that we, they ended up pulling off the um, market, but the one before that with all the different magnets, the die cuts would always shift, so. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this through here and run those both through. it. But I want to show you how cool. All right, so here's the thing. Because this is a self-healing mat, there is a little bit of static that causes the um, cardstock to stick to it. So I just always have my take your pick tool ready. So I can just come pick it up if it's sticking to it with um, static cling. Did you have static cling quite a bit when you were doing the white pieces? But look at that detail on the die. I love that. So just a reminder, do not use the thin die adapter. That's plate number two. You don't need it. 
And then we've got this piece, which has that fantastic embossed edge as well. Okay. So when I would pull up the die, it was stuck in there and I could just pop it out. Gotcha. I think different dies. I, I was having it do both ways too. All right, we'll be bringing that thing back as well um, for, our, for the card project. But I love the magnetic cutting plate. Super happy with it. Um, we'll see how, I think it's going to last a really long time with the self-healing mat. All right, so we've got these two pieces. I'm going to layer these over top of each other. And I'm actually going, the easiest way for me to kind of line this up was I'm going to put liquid glue just in the center there. I'm not going edge to edge. And then I'm going to flip this over. It was just easier for me to center this from the back as opposed to the front. So I'm just looking top to bottom, left to right, centering that. And then we've got a really cool piece that needs a little bit something more. So I'm bringing in the rustic metallic adhesive dots. I haven't um, swapped these, or I haven't put these in my storage yet. I'm gonna grab the other end of my take your pick tool and we're gonna add these sort of as like little rivets on either end of this. And these are actually metal. When you take them out, you can feel them. They're cool to the touch. So they're really, really pretty or very cool, I should say. And then we're just gonna do some dimensionals on the back. And this project will be a wrap. Do five dimensionals. Yes, PJ, great suggestion. You can use the entire surface, move your cutting stuff around. As you saw, Brian moved his die cuts all over the, the mat. You can use the whole surface. And then we're just gonna center this top to bottom and then left, so it's about the same spacing. And we've got a very cool masculine gift card shadow box with a little ribbon belly band. Love the way this looks. There we go. And I love this suite, in case I hadn't told you that already. <laughs> All right, let's jump into the project, or to the card for tonight. Got lots of pieces and parts for this. This was a fun sort of collage card to put together. So we're gonna start with a card base of Sahara sand and this measures four and a quarter by 11. I've got it scored in the middle at five and a half. This valley score line, I'm gonna turn into a mountain fold and then we can go ahead and burnish. Next, I've got a piece of basic white that's four inches by five and a quarter inches, and this is gonna be our inside layer. Quick tip, if you sometimes make mistakes while you're writing a card, just have a stash of these ready to go, and just wait to adhere them to the inside of your card after you've written on them. But I do love the finishing touch of a white layer on the inside of the card. All right, now we've got a bunch of layers for the outside here that we're gonna work on. I've got two pieces of Sahara sand. This is gonna give a little bit of a frame look. One piece that measures three and three quarters by five, and the next piece is three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. I'm gonna run this through the stamp and cut and emboss machine with an the timber embossing folder. So I'm gonna turn it I like the direction of the timber going this way. So I've got the spine on the left. I'm just gonna place that in the center. Now for this, you only need two plates because this is one of our 3D embossing folders. So plate one, then our embossing folder with the folded edge going into the machine first, and then plate number four, which is the 3D plate or the specialty plate, I guess is what it's called. Everything comes with the stamp and cut and emboss machine except for the magnetic cutting platform. That is a separate purchase. So I've got this piece and I actually like the opposite side. I love the way that that looks, the debossed side. While we've got the stamp and cut and emboss machine out, I'm trying to think, actually let's stamp first and then we'll come back and do all the die cuts. off to the side. We're going to go ahead and stamp our sentiment. This says happy birthday to a classic.
make sure I leave myself some room for the circle die cut. The other thing I love about this set of die, well, the bundle actually, is the fact that the dies and the sentiments are very interchangeable. Um, I just want to show you with this sentiment. So you can cut it out with this piece. We're going to cut it out with the circle. I actually like the circle better because it works with the happy birthday because happy birthday is curved. I don't know if this one will fit. That one does not fit, but interchangeable. I love that. So we're going to die cut this guy. We're going to do two pieces of the, is that plaid? What would you call that? Um, I think it's plaid. You guys have to tell me. And then we're going to cut this piece from Early Espresso. I think those are the only die cut pieces. All right. Get these lined up here. There's that. Scrap piece of Early Espresso. <clears throat> Are they telling me design? Argyle. Oh, Argyle, that's what it is. Thank you, I didn't think plaid sounded right. All right, so we'll run those through. All right, so again, plate one, do not use plate two. The magnetic cutting plate, which is plate five, and then cut one cutting plate three. And for this one, I'm actually going to go back and forth because those argyle pieces are a little bit intricate. You don't, you don't really need to, but I, tech, I like to do that just to prevent <laughs> any pieces from not cutting out. Let's see what we got here. And this one's going to give you that embossed edge too. How cool is that? If you did participate in my share, you saw a little mini card where I cut this piece out of vellum, which was really pretty. I loved the look of it. This one I'm gonna use my take your pick tool. This one's good and stuck here. There we go. And then these guys, I just have to pop up. They're really kind of stuck on there, but the piece is cut out like butter. Look at that argyle piece. Love it. I'll clean up that mess later. Make sure you're flipping your cutting plates as well. All right, let's go ahead and start to layer this guy together. I'm gonna start with the embossed panel. And again, I'm doing the deboss side on the front. I just love the way that that looks. You could use either side. Liquid glue is going to work really well for this. Yes, soft succulent. Thanks for asking that, Linda. We've got Cajun Craze, soft succulent, early espresso, and Sahara sand. And I'm going to bring in a little pop of crushed curry as well. So liquid glue for this. Now, with an embossed piece, the liquid glue sticks down really quickly. So get it where you want it, and then... I like the liquid glue because that flattens out that piece. It tends to get a little warped as it goes through the Samba Cut emboss machine with embossing. Then you've got that nice sort of double layer there and it keeps that embossed piece flat. Love that. We can go ahead and adhere this to the front of our card. Centrifugal force to get some more glue to the end of my bottle. I, I use these bottles until they're practically, I can't shake any more adhesive to the bottom of the barrel uh, or to the tip of the bottle. Sometimes to the extent that my arm is sore the next day if I'm really working on a lot of projects. Ugh. All right, so there's that. And then we're gonna start to piece together some parts here. This is the fun part, kind of eyeballing things and having fun with it. I am going to use my silicone craft mat here. We are going to actually, this is a little tip to kind of help you get things. We don't even need the craft mat. Let's just use the 
grid paper. This is going to kind of help me get these pieces lined up um, on the circle. Okay, so I'm going to line up those sort of butt to butt, for lack of a better term there, edge to edge. I'm going to put liquid glue on them. Probably will have to move them a little bit, but a little bit of liquid glue. Then we'll line them back up again. And I'm kind of lining that, that seam up on the edge. Now this is our grid paper. It's 11 by 17. I'm sticking to it because my hands are from the lotion. Um, but I just cut it into quarters. And then that way I can use it for stamping. And anyway, so we're going to do it this way. I'm just going to drop it right on the top. It's lined up here. Just a little tip there with your grid paper. Always a handy tool to have. So there we go, we got that piece, okay? Now I'm gonna sort of eyeball things here. I'm gonna start with this piece. I wanna put it a little bit to the lower right. And then with the argyle pieces, I'm just gonna put liquid glue on the back of the diamonds, the larger diamonds. I'm not gonna mess with trying to put glue on the thin pieces for this. And I'm just gonna start to layer this up underneath sort of where I want it to go. That's a good starting point there. Again, just dry fitting this into place. And then this one I wanna go kind of same proportion. So I don't know if you can see, I'm eyeballing sort of this diamond that's going underneath. I kinda of want those to be in the same, similar position, liquid glue. I'm gonna slip that under. And then, bringing in some of our linen thread, and I'm just gonna use Stamp and Seal Plus. I'm gonna kinda hide that underneath here. Just something to stick the linen thread to, and I'm just gonna do sort of a zigzag here. I'll show you what that looks like. Sort of a faux bow. But I do want to make sure that it's going to fit behind. I'm going to make these tails just a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to stick that into the stamp and seal, stamp and seal plus. Stick it there. And I can always move it around and change it up if I need to. It's going to twist a little bit on us but I wanna see if I can show you what this is doing. So a bit of a zigzag, let's see. So this to this to this, kind of a Z. And then I'm just gonna layer this over and make sure, yep, I think I like that. I'm not gonna trim it yet. Let's use dimensionals, which I just chuck wherever. Let me grab a new one here. Here we go. All right. Five dimensionals again. And then I'm going to get this to where I want it before I place this down. Okay, now what I can do is come in with my paper snips, trim off those ends. Almost got my finger there. So just a fun little zigzag of linen thread and then it needed something else. I thought I was done. I'm like, you know, it needs a little pop of color. Where's the pair? And in the designer series paper, there are two sheets of die cut pieces, but there's only a few of the crushed curry stars. So I wanted to show you an alternative so you can make a whole bunch of these. And I just grabbed the starlet punch and we're just gonna come in and punch one little star. This is my favorite one in the bunch. I love five pointed stars, hence my necklace that I always wear. Um, so one little star and if I, oh, here they are. I knew I put them somewhere. I'm gonna grab my take your pick tool. 
It would help maybe if I had an attachment on the end there. <laughs> I'm gonna pop that in the center of our star because I love those things. And then liquid glue, I'm just gonna put on just a little edge here, kind of half the star. Centrifugal force again. And we're just gonna pop that right off to the side here. Like so. Lots of texture, lots of fun things to look at with this. A great masculine card using the He's the Man product suite. So do you have the other um, shadow box? I put it back here. So here are tonight's two projects. If you love these products, in the description of this video is a link to shop the products in my online store. Remember, don't forget to use the host code on orders under $150 so you earn those pixie perks. Love the He's the Man product suite. It's a great price point. You get the stamp set, the dies, the designer series paper, and these great um, rustic metallic adhesive backed dots. Love it. So many fun things you can do. Great color combinations. Crushed curry, soft succulent, Cajun craze, early espresso, Sahara sand. Love these. So um, again, if you want to shop the products, they're linked in the description. We are going to jump into Q&A mode at the moment. So I will pull, cue those up really quickly. Give me one moment and we'll get to your questions here. All right. Thank you guys. Ooh, good questions tonight. All right, here we go. Thank you, Vey. I like having the Q&A at the end as well. It helps me focus as, too. Was I a teacher in a former life? Because you give the best explanations and instructions than any other demonstrator out there. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for all your hard work and inspiration. Well, first of all, I'm honored to inspire you. Thank you. I was not a teacher. It was one of my... I think when I did the Myers-Briggs, it was one of the careers that fit my personality. I am formerly a forensic accountant and records manager. So um, lots of sort of analytical, um, mathematical, I don't know, problem solving, all kinds of crazy stuff. I did use to train attorneys on how to use an electronic discovery tool. So I did have to sort of explain things in a different way to people. I think that's where I got some of my sort of teacher training, but I love explaining things in a way that makes it easy for all of you to make the projects that I share. That is my goal is when I leave my live stream, when you guys leave my videos, I want you to feel like every single one of you can do the project. So thank you. Where do you get the sleeves for your dies? So Joan, on my favorites page, the paperpixie.com slash favorites, you want to look for the C-line shop ticket holders. I, you can get 50 of those in a box. They're really inexpensive and I trim them down to seven and a quarter. So they fit the five by seven magnet cards from Stampin' Storage. It's my favorite, uh, my favorite pocket so far. I love the Stampin' Storage pockets, but the tabs were messing with my crafty OCD. So as I would get new stamp sets, I couldn't put them in alphabetical order. And so I like these without the tabs, um, but great, they're a great price as well. Where do I get the trays? I think you're asking about the project tray and I ordered those off Amazon. I have to see if I can find those in my order history and I can pop them up on my favorites page. Good question. Help me remember that. Yeah, the white, I think you're talking about, I bought them in white, yeah, white and blue. They're just acrylic trays. I don't think they were very expensive, but they are kind of fun to keep me organized. Um, I think that's the same question for Janet. So gotcha there. Can you purchase an item that exceeds your stamp rewards and pay the difference? Can, um, Penny, yes, but there's sort of a rule of thumb. You cannot add something to your, like if you're putting multiple things in the stamp and rewards section, you can't add an item that will, that's, let's see, there can't be something, it's always hard to explain this, there can't be something in your stamp and rewards like let's say you put in dimensionals for $4.25. You're not able to add something more than that. They'll make you take the dimensionals out. But yes, if, let's say for example, you wanna apply stamp and rewards. Let's say you have $20 in stamp and rewards and you wanna buy um, the, I think it's $35 magnetic cutting plate. Absolutely, you can apply the $20 towards that and then just pay the $15 difference. So yes, it's just when you put multiple items, um, there's a sort of rule of thumb with the, the numbers there. 
Do I have any celebration news? The only news I have about celebration is it's coming July 1st. So celebration will be here July and August. I have seen the celebration brochure and that's all I can say. <laughs> You're gonna love it. So that's coming, I think it's July 1st through August 31st. It's July and August this year. It was supposed to be July and August last year, but they had to move it back a month. This year we're on schedule. So July will be celebration, our summer celebration. My retired items sale will be in July. Customers and team members get first dibs and then I announce it to the public, but that'll be in the July timeframe. The small Ziploc bags for the ribbon in my product share, Kelly, I got those from clearbags.com. They're three by three Ziplocs. If you want the direct link to that, just shoot me an email and I'll send it to you. Let's see. A UK Stampin' Up! demonstrator mentioned this week Stampin' Up! is running a promo on the starter kit. You get additional credit above what they usually offer. So in the US, Debbie, yes, there is a um, an add-on to the starter kit. So for $99, you get to choose $125 in product. And then they're adding an additional $66.50 in in-color products. It is the cardstock pack, the ink pad bundle, the designer series paper, I'm always forgetting something else. I feel like there's four things. Maybe it's just three. But yeah, that is what's included in the starter kit through May 31st. So it is a great time to join. I've had lots of new team members join because they want those in color. So yes, Debbie, um, feel free to shoot me an email as well if you have questions about the that starter kit edition. So it's $191.50 in product for only $99. And it ships for free, which is like an additional 11% discount. So great opportunity. The grid, in color grid paper, thank you. Somebody helped you out, didn't they? Yep, in color grid paper, ink pads, designer series paper, and cardstock. Those four of the new 2022 to 2024 in colors. How much pressure do you use when using the bone folder? Um, ooh, and now I just do it automatically, Jerry Lynn, but that's a great question. I am a more about sort of the movement at the same time as the pressure. If you're putting too much pressure, you can't move it smoothly. So um, you can always go back over it. So don't do too much pressure, do less. And if you think you need to crisp up that edge a little bit more, just go over it again. I don't know if that helps you. Has the format for Stampin' Up! changed for ordering? My last two orders, I could not do it from my desktop. I could only use my tablet. That is a great question, Nita. Um, it has not changed, but it's possible that your internet browser might need an update or your computer might need an update sometimes, especially with the way technology rapidly changes. Um, if you're not updated on those sort of sorts of things, sometimes the website can behave differently. I usually hear the opposite, that folks have more trouble on mobile devices like tablets and cell phones versus the computers, PCs or Macs, but Try checking to see if you need any updates for your Chrome or your Firefox or whichever browser that you're using. Do I do paper pumpkin alternatives? I do not, Vey. Actually, my paper pumpkin kit goes to my daughter. So um, she actually just got it yesterday. She did not get the golden ticket, but <laughs> she was looking for it. Um, she actually, that is her thing. So I let her, the paper pumpkin's all hers, but yeah, I do not do um, paper pumpkin alternatives because I let Lily do the paper pumpkin. All the um, envelopes you use for six by six magnetic sheet envelopes. Yes, so um, for my six by six, all of these are listed in my favorites page. Six by six, I use the Avery L um, envelopes. I trim them down to six and three quarters, I think, or six and a half. I'll have to double check that. For my eight and a half by 11, I use the Stampin' Storage paper sleeves. These hold eight and a half by 11. I can put a little tab on them. They're open on two sides. For my uh, magnetic magnet cards, the five by seven, I use the C-Line shop ticket holders. Again, these are all listed on my favorites page, paperpixie.com slash favorites. And I trim those down to seven and a quarter. How do I organize my templates for quick reference? Ooh, Vicki, good question. I actually don't organize them in a way for quick reference because on my blog, there's a little magnifying glass and I go there first to search for them. Now I have them all saved on my computer and I know the names of each of the projects or maybe what I've named the template, 
but my go-to place, which I don't know if you guys know this, but there is a magnifying glass on my website. You can search for any of my projects by just a keyword, and that's probably the easiest way to find projects. Will the shadow box fit in the bag you made last week? It sure will. It sure will. It'll be a little, I mean, the bag's a little big for um, the box, but yes, the, the bag is six or four and a half inches wide, and I think this is... Oh, do, 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 do. where's my, oh, hey, look at that. Brian handed me the bag. Yep, it's going to fit both long ways, or short ways and long ways. Yep, it'll fit. I know you can't really see that on the camera, but let's see. The square ends, yeah, it's kind of fun, isn't that, Karen? I do not know the answer to that, Lynn, on the Tim Holtz Vagabond. If anybody um, has the Vagabond, can you use other, let me, let us know in the comments if you can use the other plates, the other Stampin' Up! plates in the, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have the Vagabond, so I don't know if I can answer that one. Um, it doesn't snap like that. No, Evelyn, I think what you're asking is the um, dies don't snap around, I think is what you're saying. No, not with this one. That's the whole surface is magnetic, so they stay where you put it. You can use it with the old machine. Actually, Brian was using it with the... Sizzix Big Shot Express, the electric one, and it works just works just fine. Yes, it works with Big Shot. It sure does. Does the mini the mini does not come with a magnetic plate in the box? There will be a mini magnetic cutting plate. It's not available yet. It's in <clears throat> excuse me final production, but hopefully soon. But yes, there will be a mini companion magnetic cutting plate. I think I got that one. Okay, those are the same. Um, I do not know when, other than it's hopefully soon, because they are in the final production phase. The dies in that set all be considered standalone dies. I think so, absolutely, Connie. I actually have used some of the dies in that set with totally uh, with other stamp sets as well. But one of the things I love to do is to look at stamp sets and figure out which dies will work with it. It's part of why I keep my dies stored separately from stamp sets because I oftentimes go through all my dies to kind of figure out what I want to use for a project. But yeah, I think they're fantastic dies. I don't think I have them all on here right now, but they're great dies as standalone to use for, you don't have to use them with the, with the He's the Man stamp set. Do I know if the ink pads and refill bundles will ever become available again? I'm sure that they will. Uh, I'm not sure. I think they're trying to sort of, um, there's still some production issues. So I think what they're trying to do is by not offering the bundles right now, they're not going to sell out of ink pads too quickly. There's no reason to stop you from ordering them all individually. But again, you'll miss out on the 10% discount there. But I do expect they'll have those back for sure. The magnetic plate is in the new catalog, Mary. I'll tell you which page it was. If I can find the dot, it's in the dot just before the dies section. So on page 157, I know that's hard for you to see, but 157 are all the pieces and parts for the die cutting machines, and it is the magnetic cutting plate, $28. I said 35, it's 28. <laughs> All right, what's the best way to put glue on detailed cut dies? I actually prefer to use the adhesive sheets for, for the detailed dies and putting the adhesive, adhesive sheet backing on the cardstock and then running that through the die cutting machine. Um, otherwise, you can use something like a really thin, um, you can get these on Amazon. It's got a really tiny nozzle at the end that works as well. I definitely recommend having the silicone craft mat or craft sheet. I forget what that's called. So you don't get glue all over the place. You can also use a sponge to dab glue, but that gets messy. That's too messy for me. <laughs> but that's one way. You missed one. Did I miss one? Yeah. I think I got it. Or should I keep going? Brian's trying to help me out. <clears throat> Well, I got it at the end, just in case. Okay. Somebody said you missed her, so. Oh, I'm sorry if I missed you. You put it at the end? Okay. We'll get to it. Yeah, so it's right there. So it must have been farther up. Oh, I will I will do a quick search for you, Linda. Just no, hang... it, I, I put it down. Okay, thank yeah, you. It'll be in a second. 
Um, do I ever stamp on the inside or envelope? I don't typically, here's my rule of thumb with the envelope. I don't stamp on the envelope because the envelopes go in the trash. <laughs> if that sounds, I don't know if that sounds harsh, but I'm like, eh. I am a, not a lazy crafter, but I love to, to create quickly because I've got sort of a finite period of time. Now I have more time now that I'm doing this full time, but I've always been sort of a quick, get my creative fix and I don't kind of mess with the envelopes. I am starting to stamp a little bit more on the inside of the card, uh, but I've always focused on just the outside. Good question though. Um, do I have a formula for making shadow boxes? I do, Linda. Um, and I know that I owed you measurements for this, but I just couldn't get to it till this afternoon. So, um, you do not use the host code with the purchase of a starter kit, Barbara Jean, um, unless you had a workshop that you earned Stamper Rewards and you chose at the end of the workshop that you wanted to apply Stamper Rewards to a starter kit. That's the only time well you would use Stamper Rewards, but no, you do not use the host code on the starter kit. Okay. How much would you have? How much would you add to have the reinforced sides on the lid? So this is Linda A. That you skipped over. Okay. Um, so you would add an additional inch and a quarter to the measurements because you're going to do five eighths, five eighths, or you do five eighths and one and a quarter on the side. Um, so it's going. I can't do that math off the top of my head because we're talking about sixteenths of an inch. But you'd add one and a quarter to four and five sixteenths, and one and a quarter to five and nine sixteenths. So Linda, feel free to email me and I can give you those updated measurements for that. Now, you're not gonna be able to get as many pieces out of the 12 by 12, which is why I erred on the side of just doing the single edge, not the double reinforced edge, but happy to give you those measurements. Is there a difference between the pad and the ink spots and the ink pads? There absolutely is. So the ink spots is our old felt pad, um, ink pad, and the, the ink pads now are the firm foam. So there's the felt pad, our old Stampin' Up! ink pads, that's the same as on the ink spots. So it's kind of that fabric texture. And then the new ones are foam, not the ink spots. The new ink pads are foam. When I stamp with the ink spots with the photopolymer stamps, the ink beads up and doesn't give a solid image. Sometimes that happens with the photopolymer, especially on a new photopolymer. So you can do the rub it on your jeans trick if you want to. That will kind of... Um, not rough up the edge, but it kind of gets rid of that slickness of a photopolymer set. You'll get a little bit of lint on your stamp set that way, or you can kind of clean it ahead of time, or you can, some people prime their stamp sets by inking them up with Versamark. There's a number of different ways, but sometimes a brand new photopolymer will pool up with ink, especially if it's an extra juicy ink spot. What is the best way to fill the small glue containers? I don't know if you're asking about this one, Helen, the, um, the one with the fine tip that I found on Amazon, or if you're talking about the green glue, I don't refill mine. I just use as, I just get as much of it out as I can. I think they might sell bigger bottles of those, but I'm not sure. Good question. Do I ever use the fine point glue pen from Stampin' Up? The, I don't think we carry the pen anymore, but I think you're talking about the fine tip glue. I don't really use that. I, my go-to has always been the multi-purpose liquid glue. Does the Campology stamp set have a companion die set? No, I don't believe so, Michelle. Hold on, let me double check that. It was on... He's, it's dressed after he's the man. No, Campology does not have a companion die set. Good question. Oh, you learn a lot. Good, Bay. That makes me happy. That makes me happy. All right. I think we are at the end of the Q&A. We good? Did we miss anything else? Sorry, Linda, for missing your question. All right. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. If you have any questions between now or if you're watching the replay and you have a question, feel free to reach out to me. You can leave a comment on my blog. You can shoot me an email at Julie at the Paper Pixie. Again, if you like tonight's projects and you want to purchase any of them, you can go to the link in the description and that will allow you to add those cart, add those, oh gosh, add those items to your cart in my online store. I love the He's the Man suite, so I hope you enjoyed them as well. If you picked up any tips or tricks tonight, be sure if you're watching on YouTube to like, 
the, to like the video and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my next video. And if you're watching on Facebook, like and follow for my next Facebook live stream as well. I hope you all have a wonderful and blessed week. I will be live again next Wednesday for episode 241 at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Looking forward to sharing another bundle or product suite with you next week. Again, I've got um, the Butterfly Kisses projects. I'm catching up here. Card tomorrow, box on Friday. Monday will be tonight's card. Tuesday will be tonight's shadow box. And all the measurements and supplies will be at thepaperpixie.com. Stop by and visit me there. I've got lots of ins inspiration for you. And if you don't want to miss a thing, you can subscribe and receive my blog update emails to your inbox at thepaperpixie.com slash subscribe. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful and blessed week, and I'll see you next Wednesday. Take good care. Bye.